I, I was guilty of the, uh, the the crime that I committed, and you know, uh, the the only thing that was going through my mind was just uh, worrying about what was going to take place or or the process of transitioning into the prison, and obviously, and obviously becoming acclimated uh, to a new lifestyle, and just you know, just sort of what that um, what that would entail moving forward. Do you remember that first night? Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's a process. You go back to the county jail. Uh, that's the first step. You go to your uh, your county jail, and and you're actually isolated and waiting to be uh, taken to a reception facility, which is the second place that you go, uh, and then ultimately on to the third facility, which is the actual prison that you go to once you're classified towards that. Uh, but just like anybody else, you know, a lot of guys will tell you. Um, you know, it's just a, a very stressful moment. Uh, you just stay up all night, just uh, just trying to think about, you know, just how your situation, uh, the situation that you're in affects everybody else. You know, obviously I had a little girl at the time mm -hmm. and understanding that she'll grow older and uh, also understanding that I will be absent towards my family and uh, just seeing everybody in the process. I'm pretty sure that uh, the local news has the, um, the, the, the stations on inside of the jail that he's at. So I'm pretty sure, you know, you see the victims, mothers, or you see uh, your own people, your own family suffer. And it's those moments right there uh, that where reality sets in that your behavior in some capacity caused people to feel this way. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the images that you see that affect you more than anything. I hadn't even thought about that. The fact that he could be sitting behind bars tonight watching this story playing out on the yeah. local news. Absolutely, Maurice. And, and I know you've taken your whole situation and you've turned it around and you're going around trying to help young people. But Christine, to you, um, you know, in terms of the role of the NFL and these, we'll call them troubled players, I was reading the LA Times and they had a quote, I just want to quote uh, what, what I read that really sort of caught my eye this evening and that was this, uh, playing catch with these human grenades, these troubled players as irresistible in a league where the pressure to win is high and coaches are supremely confident they can succeed where others have failed in keeping a problem pr player on, uh, on track. I mean, you, you say Aaron Hernandez was a bad seed from the beginning. That wasn't necessarily the NFL's doing, but they kept him on. They did, and we see these stories all the time, don't we, Brooke? And I don't know that this is going to end until there are enough people protesting or upset that they literally throw their season tickets back at a team, and that's just not going to happen. And I do hope, though, that the conversation from last year with, in September with Ray Rice and the elevator video, everyone remembers. Uh, the NFL has definitely taken a get tough approach uh, and is, is much tougher. Greg Hardy, even though he's with the Dallas Cowboys, is still not playing. But this is uh, different from those cases. Oh, it is. And, and I am not, br the broad brush of behavior is the conversation. In terms mm -hmm. of Aaron Hernandez, the reason that this has created so much attention, Brooke, and there's so much interest and, and horror over this is because it is so unusual. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it, you know, we're t this is, this is uh, not an NFL problem as much as this is a terrible person who happened to be playing in the National Football League. Red flags all the way along. You can make the case. Should the Patriots have drafted him in the fourth round? He went from the first round to the fourth round in 2010 because of those red flags. So there were teams that said, no, we don't want Aaron Hernandez. But um, in the broad brush, the conversation about behavior, I'm hoping that things, that there will be less tolerance for this kind of behavior, not Aaron Hernandez, but just in general bad behavior. But this is a societal problem as well. It's certainly it, not just the NFL. There were red flags. I was reading a bit about the scouting report um, and, and, you know, case in point, precisely what you're talking about. Maurice, what about in terms of behavior? You know, I was talking to a former Patriots player today and he was saying to me, uh, you can take the person out of the hood. It's hard to take the hood mentality out of the person. I mean, how hard is it as you continue on in your successful career, you can't shake those uh, friends. Uh, no, in, in, in I humbly respect uh, the perspective of, uh, of the other guests that you have on, but uh, there needs to be more of an initiative, uh, more of an initiative uh, to develop these guys and not, and, and not the initiative or not the, uh, the stands of saying, hey, we're just going to close the door towards these individuals. Uh, with the amount of resources that you have on college campuses with the, in, a, in the amount of resources that you have uh, at the uh, NFL level uh, in as big as sports is, I think there needs to be a stance where uh, you take and you get these guys and you develop them. Like I said earlier in the, in the show, you need to develop these guys' contact or their cognitive skills. Uh, you need to develop in regards to critical thinking and just understanding the, uh, the dynamics or the environment. You have to agree with me, and I, and I understand what you're saying, but inherently, you know right from wrong. I don't care where you're from. 
I, I, and just so I just hold, hold on with me with her. I, I, I understand, and we all we have to speak within context. Sure. Uh, but just making a, more of an effort, understanding uh, right from wrong, but having the ability uh, to think and to problem solve and to, to understand the dynamics of your behavior and your social status and things of that nature. I just think that there needs to be an approach to help to develop that, to understand, to develop the, the to develop the, to develop this. Uh, early on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of these guys, we come from different demographics, we come from different backgrounds, and it's not to make an excuse on the behavior that's displayed, but it is to say that uh, the approach into developing this guy, uh, once he gets to his uh, respected institution, uh, mm -hmm. needs to be done. And I just, and I say it in the context that a lot of these times when you get these athletes and you place them on these uh, college campuses, the majority of their time is spent developing themselves as athletes. I understand, uh, I understand, but I think you'd agree with me, Onus. All the way around, all the way around. Yes, Maurice Claret, yeah, I, I, I gotta I go, but I, I appreciate I'm you sorry. coming on. Thank you so 